I think that the RBA is effectively running down the same rabbit hole that developed markets central banks all over the world have found themselves in. And it's a trap. Jordan Alessio, ABC Bullion. Jordan, the Australian share market lost $50 billion during Brexit, and the Australian dollar lost more than 3% of its value. However, with the Great British Pound suffering the greatest loss and the Australian dollar since making a recovery, what we have now seen is a favourable exchange rate for the Australian dollar against the pound. Do you think this is a good outcome, especially in regards to tourism? Uh, look, I think um, if, if you look at what the, the Reserve Bank and, and, and certainly the government would be looking for, it, it is most definitely not a good outcome, the, the sort of recent strength against uh, of the Australian dollar. The Reserve Bank of, of Australia, you know, really like most central banks around the world now, would like to see the currency move lower to stimulate uh, our export markets um, and also make Australia uh, a more attractive destination for, for tourism, which is a specific point you um, uh, referred to. So from that point of view, no, I think the the rally in the Aussie dollar uh, will, will be seen in official circles as more of a problem. And with that in mind, I think we're, um, you know, we're almost certain to see more easing from the Reserve Bank uh, possibly as soon as, as as soon as August. There's a there's a very good chance that the cash rates will decline um, then and, and possibly again once more before Christmas time. The the government and, and, and the RBA and, and, and really most of the sort of business leaders within the country as well are fairly unanimous. They'd like to see the currency lower and, that, and there's a good chance that, that that will happen in, in, in due course. This month Australia had its longest running election in recent history with a coalition retained power. The length of the election almost saw Australia lose its AAA credit rating. And whilst this was avoided, Standard & Poor's have lowered their outlook from stable to negative, citing that prospects for improvements in budgetary performance have weakened following the recent election outcome. Do you agree with this and what is your outlook? Absolutely, I agree. Uh, I think Australia, uh, it, it's only a matter of time before it does lose the AAA rating. The election certainly didn't help the, the situation, but to be honest, um, it's not uh, political instability that will lead to the loss of the AAA. It is just a very, very significant deterioration in public finances and the outlook for the budget, um, which has much more to do with the very, very substantial decline in commodity prices and decline in Australia's terms of trade, which we've seen over the last few years. The, the recent budget that was announced in May um, whilst it did forecast a, a sort of very, very slow movement back towards a balanced budget, is likely to prove incredibly optimistic. Some of the assumptions that were used in that um, in that budget um, really barely seem credible. Um, one of the, the, the standouts was that non-mining investment um, is expected to, to sort of grow substantially um, from 2016-17 uh, onwards. Um, that's very unlikely to happen uh, based on current surveys. We've still got further unwinds in mining investment. Um, the vast majority of Australia's car industry will be closed closing in the net, or car manufacturing industry will be closing in the next year or two um, and we're also set to see housing construction which has been one of the bright lights for the last couple of years likely to peak this year as well so there'll be uh, job losses to come in that sector as well so for all of those reasons the the budget outlook um, which is already questionable at best and, and has led to the the warnings from the rating agencies that the, the reality is worse than what the headlines appear uh, and with that in mind it, it is really just a matter of time before we do lose the AAA. Jordan you touched on it earlier by saying you believe the RBA will cut its rate twice this year do you think this is a wise decision? Look, I, I don't think that it's a wise decision. I think that the RBA is effectively um, running down the, the same rabbit hole that developed market central banks all over the world um, have, have found themselves in, and, and, and it's now a trap. Basically, you, you make debt cheaper, um, and in the end, everyone needs even cheaper debt, and that's why we're, uh, we're in this situation where we've had over 600 interest rate cuts since the GFC hit, and, and how we find ourselves in this, this quite ridiculous position where interest rates are negative in parts of the developed world. So, no, I don't think further interest rate cuts will actually do any good for the Australian economy. Um, having said that, I, I can sympathise with why the RBA feels that they have no choice. Um, I think that they'll, there'll be at least one, most likely two cuts before Christmas. The base case for next year is that rates will hit at least 1%, though I'm inclined to agree with... Um, 
some of the forecasts by other banks where they've got a risk case scenario of the of the cash rate falling to 50 basis points in 2017. Um, the impact on the currency would be significant were that to happen. Uh, so it's a, it's a very difficult time for the Australian economy now. Uh, and in many ways, we're, um, we're catching up, although you might argue we're catching down um, to the rest of the developed world. And, and, and finally, the, the challenges that uh, Japan, Europe and America started facing uh, several years ago are, are, uh, have finally uh, washed, uh, washed up down under. Thank you, Jordan, for speaking with us today. For all the latest updates concerning the Forex market, keep checking back in with us on Dukascopy TV.